My guest this week on Anglian Lives has been a journalist, a presenter, a broadcaster, a husband and father, a company director, a vigorous all-rounder with a fascinating past and an amazing future. Gregarious, popular, a familiar man, yet never happier than when relaxing in his own five-bedroomed, self-built house with three acres of land and access to a private stream. But who the hell is this mysterious enigma? This mysterious enigma is Alan Partridge. Excellent. My guest Sorry. this week on Anglian Lives. Yeah. This is Norfolk Nights with Alan Partridge. Alan Gordon Partridge is the best and best loved radio presenter in the region. That was for anyone who's going through a trial separation or messy divorce. The Human League with the Don't You Want Me. Uh, 50% she got. Wait, it's weighted against the man. He was born into a changing world of rationing, teddy boys, apes in space and the launch of ITV. But the Norwich of today is a very different place, although the market still remains. Hello, hey. I'm Alan Partridge. Alan's broadcasting go. career began as chief DJ with Radio Smile at St Luke's. Sorry, second hand, but it's in quite good condition. Basically he makes a point of returning every February. Has anyone never heard of me? No. Right, it's, it's very rude to say After that. replacing Peter Flint as the presenter of Scout About, he entered the top eight of BBC Sports presenters. Bang! And join me, Alan Partridge, for the big race at Marple. The, the horse race. But Alan's big break came with a prime-time BBC chat show. Aha! Sadly, Knowing Me, Knowing You battled against poor scheduling, having been put up against News at 10, then in its heyday. Due to declining ratings, a single catastrophic hitch <laughs> and the dumbing down of network TV, Alan's show was cancelled. Not to be dissuaded, he embraced this opportunity to wind up his production company, leave London and fulfil a lifelong ambition. He returned to his roots in local radio. Call of the night! OK, the lines are buzzing for tonight's hot topic. Uh, who is your favourite rough-voiced singer? Uh, Rod Stewart and Chris Rea, big votes for them, but uh, they've been massacred by a late surge from rasping taffy Bonnie Tyler. wonder how many she smokes. Roots that first sprouted in a field in East Anglia. That was my watch. <laughs> well, just lost, lost my blowing watch. Ha! Huh. <laughs> Actually, keep that bit in. It's, it's nice. I think it's, it gives it a human touch. Nice. Now single, Alan is an intensely private man and a keen businessman. 300k. 300k I'll take it to Sky. He's always on the lookout for new investment opportunities. Down. Tonight, we examine both the public, private and professional faces of Alan Partridge. Chapter 1. Beginnings. Congratulations, Mrs Partridge. It's a boy, said the doctor, handing me a boy to my mother. I had just been born. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, just... Alan, your book, Bouncing Back, uh, if you don't mind me saying, I think it's a rather brilliant book that only ended up out of print because it was not properly promoted by the publisher. Um, thank you, Ray. I think that's fair to say. Why did you want to come on television and talk about it? I think to have my side of the story heard, um, though I'm not expecting an easy ride, Ray. <laughs> I know you're one of the toughest in the business. Thanks. And um, how did you prepare for the writing of the book? Uh, hmm. I spent a week in Prestatin and I read eight autobiographies, which, as you well know, is more than one a day. Um, and I asked myself a lot of tough questions. Mm -hmm. I wrote them down and I put them in the book. Shall we have another look at the book? Yes. Where, where do I look? No, no, to the right. Am I a broadcaster? Yes. Do I hold a full driving licence? Yes. Am I very good at judo? Yes, little known fact. Did I once talk a depressed man down from a wall? Yes. But it wasn't that high, and he wasn't that depressed. He'd locked himself out of his business premises and was trying to get in. Yeah, that was from a chapter entitled, Yes, I Am, No, I'm Not. It's more or less the list I read. 
um, but slightly extended. It's the weakest part of the book. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. Well, what do you think is the weakest part, Ray? Well, it's. I mean, uh, it, it's all. It's all great. I mean, it's all very good. I mean, it's. It's. It's, mm. it's a very, very yeah. good book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At one point, you speak so movingly about your Toblerone addiction. Yes. Um, we wanted to do a product placement deal with Toblerone, but they insisted on putting a mini Toblerone on the jacket cover, and I felt that would have cheapened an otherwise tragic tale of how I, Alan Partridge, bounced back. Mm. I remember one very low point. I, I got a whole one stuck sideways in my mouth, and a woman who works for me had to break its back with a toothbrush. I actually made myself sick. I, mean, I didn't make, make myself sick. I spewed into a thermos. Uh, no prizes for guessing what I did with that. A lot of people... Threw it away. A lot of people, uh, when they get low, they turn to alcohol or drugs. Yes, I know a producer in the business who mm. is an alcoholic. Um, but, you know, he makes a living, so people ignore it. Uh, when he's on the wagon, you see him in the, the pub with uh, an orange juice, but you can tell he wants one. And, uh, you know, his wife's left him again. Um, she won't go back to him this time. Oh dear, it was a bit of, um... Yeah, he didn't knock her about. Was, if anything, it was the other way around, what I heard. Mm. I mean, you know about that. Alan is extremely skillful at scaling the dizzy slopes of sports commentation. This course actually reminds me of when I was tobogganing at the age of 16. I hit something and fell off. I was concussed. Hit a cat. No cats here, of course. The groundsmen are quite strict about not letting cats onto this course. One of those things comes down on a cat, it doesn't stand a chance. Sevi Ballesteros, the bullfighter. That's what I call him. No, uh, Technically, is a professional golfer. A friend of mine said recently, uh, what do you get if you cross a ballerina and a bastard? Ballesteros was his answer. I guess if you analyse it, that Seve combines the qualities of both those animals. He has the lithe sophistication and nimbleness of a ballerina combined with the hard-nosed, ruthless thuggery of a bastard. You had a fantastic career on national television, and yet you walked away. That's the truth. I know. Yeah, whatever, whatever anyone else says. I, mean, I didn't. I didn't like myself back then. I was. I was. Yeah. You know, I was seriously frigged up. Mm. Um, but I'm much, much happier now. Um, in fact, every morning now, I get up in the morning, look at myself in the mirror, and say, "I'm Alan Partridge, and I like you." <laughs> Uh, no, not every morning. This morning I just, I was in a rush, got up, went, hi, got to go, you know. Mm. Um, but back then I, I was a monster. Um, I mean, I never, I've never got drunk on power, but I, on occasions I have been a little tipsy. Uh, these days I just stick to a half, maybe two at the most. If I'm driving, I'll, I'll just have a half. Yeah, I mean, I realise I'm just, just talking about drink now. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, not, not power. OK, um, it's not just me asking the questions tonight. We're also joined by my electronic assistant, Digital Dave. <laughs> Digital Dave. <laughs> OK, Digital Dave, far away. How long did it take after your wife left you for your divorce to come through? Wife. Wife, yeah, it sounds like life and it's wife, sorry. How long after my wife yeah. left me did the divorce come through? Mm -hmm. Two and a half years. What do you think of American football? It's just futuristic rugby. Is your wife still in the man she left you for? Sorry, it's wife. I know it sounds wife's like life, wife. but... Um, no, she's not. What is the best way to cook a sausage? Is it, is it best What's way? the best way to cook a sausage? sausage yeah. uh, fork prick the skin to allow the moisture to escape. Simple as that. What would you say to any young people heading for London? to any nine people heading for London. So what would you say to any young people? Go for the day, visit Madame Two Swords, get the hell out.